If you're a little monkey in the city searching for something fun to do, you don't have to look very far. The N Avenue Animal Shelter scavenger hunt is about to begin. Boys, I tell you, Team Piscetti is going to do very, very well today. Maybe we won't win, but we're going to raise a lot of money for a good cause. Who says we won't win? Ah. Well, we're pretty good, but we're never going to beat my cousin. You have a cousin, Chef Piscetti? Oh, that's right. Cousin Nilguini. He's the greatest, even when we were little. I thought I knew all about making the mud pies. Hey. Ah. Until I saw Cousin Nilguini's. I'll never be as clever as he is. <gasps> there he is! Come on, come, come! <laughs> hey, Cousin Paschetti, nice to see you. You look great. How you doing? Well, uh, good. But I'm afraid we're going to lose to you. Come on, where's your confidence? And with a team like this, how can you not win? <laughs> Scavengers, are you ready? Here we go. See you at the end of the race, winner. <sighs> You're each being handed the list of shapes. Some are easy, some are hard and worth more points. Ah. Whoever has the most points at the end wins the golden rectangle. You have one hour. Ready? On your mark. Get set. Hunt! 48 points and 21 minutes left. <laughs> What's next? Uh, only hard ones. Eight things that add up to one. Huh? George knew that one and one adds up to two. But eight things that add up to one? Ugh. What else? A hundred diamonds. Ooh. They're worth a hundred points. But you have to have all one hundred. Diamonds? Hmm. George remembered a diamond. <laughs> Joe. Good luck. Ooh, what did you find for our team? <laughs> That's diamond-shaped, all right. Only 99 left to go. <laughs> you rescued it! Thank you so much! <laughs> Make that 100 left to go. In 15 minutes. I guess we better stick with what we got. Woo! <laughs> A nice breeze! Our octagon! Oh, I got him! No. Whoa. Oh, no. <laughs> My goodness. Eight. Eight pieces! Huh? Eight slices that add up to one. One pizza. That's the answer, Nettie. I love you. Oh, oh shit. Nettie! Oh, nice. Is it? Two minutes! Run! I'm proud to say the shelter will have the biggest donation ever, thanks to the winning team, Team Piscetti! <laughs> the animals of the N Avenue shelter, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy! <laughs> George was glad he'd helped the chef with the contest. But win or lose, the chef was always a champion to George. Stop it, you tickling me! What are you doing? Welcome 
to the incredible edible Arboretum, a cornucopia of exotic comestibles. Blueberries! Aracia! Blueberries are my favorite bush-based fruit. Come on, George. It, it looks like you all forgot the county sprout rules. Uh, rule number one, never eat any plant that you're not 100% certain is safe. And that means... Consulting the edible plants guidebook? Um, no, it means getting an okay from an adult. Right. Rule number two, plants are living things. You can kill or hurt them if you're too rough. So don't pull on them and don't break any branches. <laughs> Come on. Why is the screen flickering? Either the Earth is off its axis, or I forgot to charge the batteries. Okay. George, can you climb that tree and see where we are? <laughs> and Bill... Bill? Bill, where are you going? Don't worry. I've got my handy backup compass. This way, folks! Bill? A, a sprout never leaves the trail. That, 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 that's rule number three. Bill! Oh, our excitement's really growing Cause we don't know where we're going In this direction, green In this direction, a path <gasps> <laughs> George couldn't believe what he was seeing. Someone was trying to break that branch. Somebody was not being a sprout. Oh no, this man was wrecking a tree. Whoa. Hey, are you a monkey? Cool. I always wanted a monkey, but my mother said no. George had to do something, and fast. This tree was in trouble. Hey, return the headgear, monkey. George didn't mean for the hat to get wet. Or the man. But George couldn't wait around. He had to check on that tree. George wished he could think of a way to get the branches back on the tree. He needed something sticky. Really sticky. Like... Mud. George! Oh, thank goodness I found you! Oh. I'm sorry I left you in that tree. <laughs> oh, Dr. Greenbean, nice to see you. <laughs> sorry we're late. We've had a rough day. Tell me about it. First this monkey ran off with my hat, and now my tree lopper has vanished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> What's going on? Who put mud on this? Uh, George? <laughs> ah, so Dr. Greenbean was cutting some branches and you thought he was hurting the tree. Ah, <laughs> uh, you should have asked. Oh, wait, <laughs> you're a monkey. Well, anyway, this is called pruning. You make a careful cut, and it doesn't hurt the tree at all. Hey, I got it! Uh, Mr. Sproutmaster, according to this, you're going the exact wrong... Wait, you're going the right way. Never mind, proceed. Hi. 
Boy, I'm glad to be home. Professor Wiseman asked me to bring some rare stamps to Mr. Stamp. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five. All there. Whew, they're so rare, I, I was nervous I might lose one. <laughs> wow, George, I can't believe you did all that while I was gone. <laughs> you know, I think you broke the world's speed record for making a gigantic mess. George didn't see a gigantic mess. Just a bunch of little messes that look big together. <laughs> George, you have to learn to clean up after yourself, and there is no time like the present. Here's your very own dirt dragon. <laughs> now you can clean up whenever you see a mess. <laughs> See you later, George. Hi, Mr. Stamp. Those rare postage stamps are right here on my... <clears throat> Can I call you back? <clears throat> huh. Wow. George cleaned the whole place, including the rare valuable stamps. That means they're in the vacuum until he empties the bag. Chucky couldn't carry all those small pieces of biscuit at once. <laughs> Lucky for her, her friend George was here. Chucky hoped he would guard the pieces for her. Charky forgot that George didn't speak dog. <laughs> Did a monkey in a cape just take our jacks? <laughs> <laughs> a monkey with a vacuum just vacuumed up my winning lottery ticket. <laughs> George was a happy hero, thinking of all the animals and people he had made happy. Isn't it working? What good is a superhero without a vacuum cleaner? When the bag is filled, you empty it into a garbage can and start again. <laughs> of course. It was time to empty the bag. <laughs> and there was the perfect place to get rid of everything that was in it. George saw everyone he had helped today running towards him. They must be coming to thank him. George, have you emptied this bag at all today? George was happy to be of service. I'm happy to say they're all there. Uh, thanks. George, would you like to vacuum my place? I have lots of valuable, dusty collectibles. Valuable collectibles? Uh, sorry, gotta go now. Bye. <laughs> George! <laughs> Thanks for helping me with the Nature Week exhibit, George. 
we'd like to see the tracks of all the animals that live around here. Oh, the swim mask? Oh, I'm going to go jump in the lake to conduct the Nature Week fish survey. Bye. George wished his photos were more exciting, but there weren't many exciting animals around here. Hey, George. What you doing? Wow, I see you've got almost every local animal except that fawn I've seen in the hills. A fawn is a baby deer. Bet you don't see too many of them in the city, huh? A fawn was just the special, unusual animal George was looking for. Come on, I'll show you where to find it. George still hadn't seen the fawn or learned what its tracks looked like. <gasps> These were the biggest tracks George had seen so far. Something extra large must have left them. They looked like big duck tracks. <laughs> a big duck would make a terrific photo. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> this was like the long track the garter snake made. A giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. <laughs> But a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. <laughs> Maybe it swam back home. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. <laughs> in a book. There they were, dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. <gasps> and the tracks were headed towards Bill's house. Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yep, my new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh-huh. Hey! Now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. It sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. Oh. How did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George, he just used his imagination. Isn't that right? <laughs> Are you closed? Is there some holiday I forgot about? Ask the chef. Huh? Wow, what happened? 
please, please, just a taste. A tiny little taste? <laughs> please? <laughs> oh. huh. Gnocchi approves all my recipes. But for the past few days, she likes nothing. I cannot serve unapproved food to my customers. Gnocchi lives on Italian food? Of course not. She merely gives approval. One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico. <laughs> Oh, my cooking is worse than the cat food. <laughs> well, it sure doesn't smell worse. Yuck. Huh. Mmm. Mmm. And it certainly doesn't taste worse. Not that I've ever tasted cat food. You're just being nice. If Gnocchi won't eat my food, there's no point in serving today. Oh. Flower delivery. Oh, it's a nice selection today. Uh, just to put him down, Hector. Thank you. Okie dokie. Yeah. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. We just started using a florist. Gnocchi thinks the flowers are snacks for her. You might as well let her eat flowers. She won't eat my food. Oh. I will talk to Chef. This is what comes of letting a cat make cooking decisions. George wondered why Gnocchi wouldn't eat the chef's cooking when it was clearly delicious. Oh. Maybe tomorrow would be better. May as well not let them go to waste. If Gnocchi's eating cat food, she's not sick. What could it be? Uh, ah. What will we do without ravioli? <clears throat> Uh-oh. I think I'm allergic to something in here. Yeah, I, I have an allergy. It's when your body overreacts to something like food or a, a, a plant or flowers. Some types of flowers can make some people sneeze and cough. Oh. But for the past few days, she likes nothing. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. George, what are you doing in here? What are you... George, I think he's allergic. You shouldn't... <gasps> One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico! Yes! 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 Job! <laughs> this will be our special tonight. It's Gnocchi approved! <laughs> if not for George, we would never have known that Gnocchi was allergic to those flowers. Giorgio, you have saved the restaurant and my reputation. I'll give you a free pizza. Ah!